So yeah, we're going to look at Forza Horizon 2 again. You've been demoing it all day, haven't you? All day, yeah. Sessions. Which has been awesome, to be honest, right? It's a long day, but we've seen so many people here. Lots of people coming, really enthusiastic, coming off the back of E3, wanting to see more. The great thing, as everybody saw last night on Twitch, is we're showing all new content from the Xbox One version here at Gamescom this week. So we're getting a great reaction. Lots of people are loving the game, being very complimentary, which is lovely. Yeah. Be a great boost for the team back home. We've been working so hard over the summer. So yeah, it's, it's brilliant that I get to come out here and speak to so many people. So what you've been showing all day was actually what you showed on the on the stream last night. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, you yeah, literally yeah. saw it here first on Twitch. It's great, isn't it? So um, what kind of reactions were you getting today? Oh, brilliant. Everyone's very positive. You know, I think obviously we announced the game just before E3, so people were coming into it not knowing what to expect, not knowing that much about the game. Yeah. Um, and obviously the team have been working so hard over the summer. I mean, you can see on this on the show floor, you can see in the BCD we showed last night, yeah. um, visual improvements, gameplay improvements, new features that we're announcing this week at, at Gamescom. Yeah. And people have been really excited about it. I mean, journalists are always really friendly. I think we've got a lot of... Uh, there's a fond remembrance of Horizon. A lot of people are very enthusiastic about that game, which is lovely and it's great to hear. Um, so they come in and they, and they want to know more. And obviously we're, we're telling them so much more that we're getting a great reaction. Right. So um, particularly because our game is set in, in Southern Europe, French journalists, Italian journalists are absolutely loving the setting of the game. Right. Um, so it's del uh, they're delighted when uh, some people, as one guy did today, said, I live just in that area, just near Nice. Um, yeah. And it looks exactly like that. Did he see his like, house? <laughs> I think we cut his house out. <laughs> that would be quite funny, wouldn't it? If you woke up one morning and there was a team from Playground Games outside Taking your house. Taking hundreds of photos photos of your house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be quite awkward. All right, so Andrew is taking us through some gameplay. Thanks, Andrew. Andrew was the driver the other day on the um, on our after show as well. So hopefully he's done a bit more practicing because that, that first <laughs> run through the other day was a bit rough. It was wasn't pretty it? sloppy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know it. Honestly, Ralph, every time I look at this, it just shocks me how amazing it looks. It's really, really phenomenal. It's a, it's a really beautiful game. Again, testament to the hard work of the team back at Playground in the UK. They've been working really hard. Mm. But yeah, it's 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 such a stunning location, first and foremost, right? You yeah. know, we're, currently we're in south, the south of Tuscany. It's just a beautiful part of the world. It was yeah. such a standout choice for us. Um, but then, yeah, we've got such great next-gen visuals in the game as well, you know? Beautiful lighting now. We've done lots of work on the on the visuals, on the on the foliage um, that you can see here on the sea. Lots of the shaders in the game have really started to pop. Yeah. Um, so it's just yeah, it's beautiful to, to explore. It's beautiful to drive around. I'm guessing that uh, photo mode will be included in the game, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, you're absolutely. Gonna be able to get some unbelievable photos in this. You do and. Here's something that's really cool that we haven't actually talked about at all so far, but this seems like the perfect opportunity. I mean, we love photo mode. The community, the community take incredible photos. They're an incredibly com uh, creative community, the Forza community. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to really look the photo mode experience more into the, the central game. Yeah. So there's a point, a couple of hours into the game, where you've, you've got comfortable, you're progressing well. Um, when the head of the festival will actually offer you a job as the Horizon photographer. Yeah. And he will actually pay you to take photos of all the, the cars that are at the Horizon festival. So suddenly you're actually you're incentivized, I guess, to start using photo mode, yeah. taking beautiful photos of all the cars in the game and earning money as a result. Yeah. Did it surprise you with Horizon, the, you know, the creative things that people were doing with photo mode? It, it always does. I mean, I'm always amazed by the ingenuity and the creativity of gamers in general, right? And particularly within Forza, personalization, customization has always been such a big part of it. So we knew going into Horizon that people create the most incredible things with the livery editor. You know, they make the most incredible paint jobs. Um, but yeah, it still surprises you exactly what they can do. This time, I think we're ready for them because we've got great tools within the game that really uh, curate people's uh, UGC content um, to other people. So as soon as you buy a car, we're going to be suggesting great liveries that are favourites with the community for you to stick on that car immediately. All right, great. Let's go back and talk about the location a bit again. I think you know I love that story about the um, the Italian who was almost moved to tears by this. I mean that's that's quite high. Andrew, nice work. First place, just pretty, like that. Pretty impressive. He set a high bar, hasn't he? <laughs> but I think have you have you found that there's a bit of a you know people feel very connected to games that are set 
you know, in their hometown, in their country or whatever, right? There's, there's Absolutely. a, a kind of real strong emotion around that. Absolutely. So certainly, yeah, the response we've had from the French guys, from the Italian guys, they're absolutely really excited about it. Some guys from IGN Italia were just like really almost grateful that we set the game. I mean, thank you for your beautiful country, right? You know, we've just uh, we've, we've photographed it, we've, we've put it into the game. But I think the thing about the location here um, is it also feels really different, really fresh. It's not a, um, they're not countries, it's not countryside. I've explored a lot in video games. I'm thinking maybe Assassin's Creed 2 is going back in time, yeah. uh, literally. But you know, it, it feels very different. So I think a lot of people, even if they're not necessarily from France or from Italy, mm. are going to really enjoy exploring this part of the world because it's so well known, it's so beautiful. It's got such great driving roads. Yeah, yeah. Did you look at other parts of the world? Like, what kind of process did you go through? Yeah, I mean, we, we looked all over. For the first game, we did a really intensive research um, process where we just looked everywhere in the world. Yeah. The thing about the Horizon Festival is, I think the concept's really portable, right? You, could ha you can see a Horizon Festival happening pretty much anywhere in the world, yeah. as long as it's beautiful, as long as it's got great roads. Yeah. Um, so really, the world is our oyster. For the first game, uh, we went with Colorado. Awesome, awesome location. I really, really enjoyed driving around there. Um, for this one, we well, went back to our nose. Why did you go with Colorado in the first game? So we actually had a, a scoring system. So there, yeah. I think there was about 30 locations all over the world. Some really obvious ones, some not so obvious ones. But we had this list of criteria as well. Um, you know, the beauty of the terrain. Um, the, the driving roads, diversity, because it's really important in a game, you know, that you're driving yeah. through different areas. Um, there was a whole list of criteria, and basically we had a scoring system. Right. So we went through everyone and we totted up the scores for each. Um, and Colorado came out on top, it just yeah. scored really highly in a lot of categories. Um, but interestingly, we went, we re revisited that scoring system for Horizon 2. Yeah. And right below Colorado, was the south of France and then the north of Italy. It might have been the other way around, but basically they were two and three. Yeah. And looking at it this time, knowing what we could do on Xbox One, we could build a bigger world, we've got more power. We said, these countries are actually adjacent, they're right next to each other, we could just draw a line around both of them yeah. and build them into the, the uh, Xbox One game. And that's exactly what we did. Combined, their scores were, were through the roof, you know, so it was the perfect choice. Okay, so when you... When you actually start building the world, I guess you're looking at Northern Italy, you're looking at the south of France, you have a, you know, you could window a map of the world on that area. Yeah, yeah. And then what's the next step, you know, because so you can't put everything in, right? But Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, that box that you're describing was huge, you know, hundreds yeah. and hundreds and hundreds of square miles. Um, so the, the next step is that we start looking in, de in detail at all the areas within that. You know, so we start doing internet reference uh, research right away and we're, we're picking out the places that we'd love to go. And that list is massive, right? That's oh, for, that's a, for a wee holiday, like. <laughs> Do you know, I've never got to go on one of these research trips. Really? They tell me that they are incredibly oh. hard, hard work. But I, don't, I don't know, how hard can it be, right? First of really? the list, surely. <laughs> next time, <laughs> yeah. next time. Uh, but yeah, so there's, there, there, we, we, we have loads of places within this big box, within France and Italy. And then we narrow it down, and then we start. We do start sending people out, and they go in groups of, of four, and they'll go for a week or two weeks at a time. Yeah. I'm joking. It is a very arduous um, research trip. They drive thousands of miles. So yeah. they go. They fly over. They rent a car. They uh, mount uh, an HD camera on the dash. Right. So everywhere they drive, we're getting that HD footage back, right. and that footage then runs on screens around our studio for the next year, basically. Mm -hmm. So even the guys that don't go on the research trips feel like they've been on the research trips, right? Uh, they are immersed in the, in the world yeah. we're, we're creating. They stop everywhere, they take meticulous photography, mm -hmm. then they bring it all back, and we literally spend weeks sifting through it, picking out you know, what might be a highlight in the game, you know, a particular yeah. landmark, a particular road, um, and then we start collating all that, all that reference material, and it starts to form its way into into the world that we're building. First, very simply, um, in, in what we call white box. So there's no textures. It's just we're building the geometry of the of the world very simply. Yeah. Um, and then finally, we start to refine it into what you see in game nine. Yeah. Hey, do, do you start with a list of? Kind of more, I guess, gameplay elements that you know you need to hit. So maybe yeah, you, you're going to want like a, a city grid, yeah. or for that kind of experience, you're going to want mountainous, winding terrain. You're going to want, hopefully, 
because in Forza Horizon, my, one of my favourite bits was the interstate, the highway. Yes. Just yeah, getting absolutely. up to top speed on that and run. So have you got that kind of thing? You know, do, do you you're, go with a list at the end we, you take we, off? we do. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. Certainly for the, for this one, I mean, we built a town in in, in Colorado in the original Horizon. It wasn't huge. Yeah. We really wanted to do a city this time, and you know, we were kind of spoiled for choice in the area we'd selected. Um, you know, down the, the, the French Riviera, the Côte d'Azur, there's numerous cities all with, you know, their own, own selling points. And then again, yeah. in northern Italy, there's some great cities. We, we eventually went for Nice. It's just such a cool city. It's such a, a variety of architecture. Yeah. That, that boulevard along the seafront is really iconic, some really iconic buildings on it. Yeah. Um, and I was, yeah, I've been, I've been telling people today, I love it for its kind of PGR-ness. You know, I really get that that PGR throwback sensation when I'm racing in Nice, when I'm driving around Nice, um, some you know street racing and some circuits there. Um, so yeah, so we picked Nice, but you're right, yeah, Interstate Auto Autostrada, as we uh, yeah, as, as we call it in, in 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 France. I think it actually runs right through France and it's into Italy, much longer than the one in Colorado. But yeah, I love that experience as well when you can really start topping out your cars. Yeah. Um, you've got that weaving in, in it, exactly. Brilliant. Maybe yeah. on the wrong side of the carriageway, you know, into oncoming traffic. And also up fun. The multiplier as well with all those near misses. Absolutely, nice. absolutely. And tunnels. I mean, the the uh, autostrada north of, of Nice just has the most epic tunnels going through those mountains. Right. So we've got them in. Always a fantastic sensation of speed and the sound. Obviously, as the you know the engines reverberating yeah, yeah, yeah. around the inside of the tunnel. Yeah. Let's let's come back to sound actually because that, um, that's an interesting one to talk about. Uh, go again, Andrew. Yeah. So what we're going to do is Andrew's going to run through again. Oh, we got some questions as well. Say that again. Oh yeah, yeah, Mark. Uh, right, hold on. You're not Martin, you're Andrew. But I need to ask you to drive the Aston Martin. It's confusing, this, isn't it? Uh, I meant to say earlier we're going to take questions from from you all watching. So, uh, Ian, how how do people submit questions? How do people submit questions? In the Twitch chat. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so questions in the Twitch chat. Um, let me finish my question first. Yeah, it's more important, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we were talking about, you know, the photography, the HD video, you know, everything you take as reference for, for, for building this world. Do you take like? Do you try and capture the culture of these places as well? I mean, is there is there part of it which is like, you know, the feeling of it? You know, not to get too kind of touchy feely about it. I think it, that's a really, it's a really interesting question. Thanks. It's, it's right. part. <laughs> I hope these community questions are as good. <laughs> I don't worry. I won't patronise them in the same way. <laughs> that's a really interesting question, Graham. Mm -hmm. um, it's part of the reason that we send we send actual team members, right? You know, because we could just we could commission photographers to go over there and do all that donkey work and um, you know save us the hassle in a, in a sense. But I think there really is a sense of sending people over to get a, get a feel for the area. You know, there's something you get that you can only get from from being in a location. Like, particularly in the French Riviera, there's a quality to the light which is kind of legendary amongst painters. You know, our art director is always telling me about this. You know, but you really have to be there. People flock to that have flocked to that area for hundreds of years to try and paint the light. It's a very specific quality to the light. So being there really helps, you know. And the people come back um, having experienced the culture, having experienced the locations. You know, of course they've, they've eaten there, they've, they've stayed there, they've met the people as well. Yeah. Um, so they come back, and particularly when they then go and work in a very specific area, they become very. Uh, attached to it right, as bet. well so so yeah there's real benefit in sending the people over and they come back and they evangelize about their particular area to the rest of the team who are seeing it on the screens and seeing the the reference footage as well all right. good all right let's get to the better questions I'm sure uh, from everyone on the twitch chat okay so Napster first of all he hopes that there are more barn finds in uh, Forza Horizon 2 than there were in Forza Horizon 1. So first of all, there are barn finds in here, right? First of all, there are barn finds in Forza Horizon 2. Second of all, there are more barn finds in Horizon 2 than there were in Horizon 1. What an excellent first question. Um, let, let, let me tell you a bit more about them, because there's actually a little bit more to that story about how they've evolved in Horizon 2. So, yeah. I mean, first of all, it was a really cool feature, and I say that because people really 
related to it, I guess. Yeah. They got it, they really enjoyed the, uh, the concept. So that's how we know it was a really cool feature, they tell us that. We're, so we're delighted to bring it back in Horizon 2. Um, I guess one of the feedback points we had from the barn finds in the original game was that they were all cars that they'd seen before in Forza, right? And I, and I guess one argument there is, well, you've seen a lot of cars in, in Forza over the years. Yeah. But we took that, that feedback and I think we really reacted to it, we really responded to it. Mm. Um, so more than half of the cars that you'll find in barns in Horizon 2 are cars you've never seen before in the Forza franchise ever. So I think that's really cool. I think that's going to be an extra frisson of excitement when you open that door yeah. um, and you see that car for the first time and it's something you've never seen before, you've never driven before in, in Forza. So restoring that car and then getting it pristine out of the garage and driving it for the first time should be a really special moment. I hope it will be for people. Yeah. I guess the second thing is, in Horizon, we tried to hide the barns a little bit. But um, as is well documented, I guess, because it was mainly roads in Colorado. There wasn't so much uh, off-road terrain, so much countryside that you could drive in. Yeah. Um, we, they were always pretty much close to our roads, yeah, so you were driving along the road, you would find the barn find. Yeah. Now, not deliberately, we haven't deliberately tried to make it harder for them to, to find this time, but just by virtue of the fact that our world is so open now, you can drive off the road, you can drive across fields, you can drive through forests. Um, our barn finds are now, just by that very nature of the world, more difficult to right. find. But I think that, I like that trade-off, right? You know, we're, we're giving Definitely. people a car, giving people a car that they've never had before in Forza. Um, I like that they have to put in a little bit of effort. They're not going to stumble over it, they really have to go looking for yeah. it. What were your inspirations for the barn finds and the signs and all of those things in Horizon, which really felt like that, it felt like you were drawing on uh, you know, collectibles and challenges yeah, from other yeah. game genres. You know, it's you don't I, often see them in racing games. I don't think. I, I think so. So the barn finds are very specific. I mean, that's an idea that is inspired by real life. You know, you, you see these stories yeah. from time to time. Um, it happens in America, which has made it perfect for Colorado. It happens in Europe as well, actually. Yeah. Some of our barn finds in Horizon 2 are actually inspired by real life barn finds around Europe. Right. Um, and you, you hear about these cars, which for one reason or another are left in a barn and then the property changes hands nobody knows the car's there and one day someone opens the door and finds you know a 1965 classic which is now worth two million euros yeah. you know and that's like happy days yeah. um, right. we love we love that kind of story we love the fact that we could give it a bit of a gameplay twist and give the player something really really valuable to find as well okay fantastic Napster thank you for the question mate I've just spotted a really interesting one here that I'm going to run past you first before I ask it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Jackson underscore AUT, Jackson out. I always sound like I write numpty when I try and write these things. I, ho I hope I'm I don't think they're right meant to be pronounced, are they? Jackson out asks, tell us about Anna. That is, that is a great question, actually, because um, some people have been asking that today because we're not, we haven't actually spoken all that much about Anna. Not. Uh, for any reason other than we have so much to talk about and we only have limited time, but we've got time now. Anna is, let me remember if I can get this uh, right, your automated natural navigation assistant. Oh, okay, uh, But you okay. can call her Anna in the I game. Thought, I thought it was someone at the studio or something like that. <laughs> that would be a weird question, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Is Anna okay? A bit intrusive. You know Anna that works at the studio, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. She's, she's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so she is basically, she's half GPS, half personal assistant. Okay. So in the last game we had, uh, obviously we have a GPS, turn left, turn right, that sort of thing. Uh, and we had this cool feature using Connect that you could voice control it. Um, which, which, which was awesome and solved kind of a, a problem with open world games in general, that whenever I need to set a route somewhere, I always have to pause the game, I always have to open the map, set the route, it takes me out of the game. Yeah. With, uh, with the GPS voice in, in Horizon 1, we shortcutted through that. You could just say GPS festival, etc. It, yeah. it was pretty cool. We liked it. This is really the next gen version. This is um, GPS Voice 2.0, I guess. Okay. Um, in that she still does all that stuff, but she's intelligent as well. And this is where the personal assistant bit comes in. She is there to help you. She remembers what you're doing in, in your game. She knows where you are. So at any point in the game, I can say, Anna, what should I do? And Anna, knowing where you are, knowing what you're in the middle of or what you're close to, can say, well, you're in the middle of a championship, would you like me to take you to the next race? Yeah. And she'll you say, yes, she'll set, set a route to the next race. Or she'll say, you're actually in the vicinity of a barn find. 
Um, would you like me to set a route to the area? And again, you say, yes. You don't have to say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she'll set a route there. She does other things as well. So if your friends come online, she'll say, hey, a couple of your friends are in an online road trip. Yeah. Would you like me to take you into their game? And you, again, you say yes. And she will instantly match make you into their session. You know, you don't have to do anything. I don't even have to press a button. Yeah. Just by by replying to her, she'll take me there. And when I when I leave the game, maybe I'm playing something else, and then I come back into the game, one of the feedback points we had from the original Horizon was, I often forget what I was doing, right? You know, what was I in the middle of? Yeah. She'll know that you're coming back to the game after a period, and she'll say, hey, you've been away for a while. You were in the middle of doing this. And just reminds you where you are in the game so you can basically take up where you left off. Great. So she, ace. She's awesome, yeah. yeah. Nice one. OK, thanks, Jackson. Out. Uh, right, let's see what else have we got. So, Katuso86 asks, apart from upgrading the cars, can we do some tuning like changing gear ratios? You can absolutely do some tuning like changing gear ratios and much, much, much more. So, huge feedback point. There's a, there's a common theme here, isn't there? Feedback from Horizon. That I, I guess it shows we're listening. We really value the feedback group. Um, what fans think about the game. Lots of people said, why can't we tune our cars like we can in Forza Motorsport? Yeah. Um, and we said, that is a great, that's a great point. Let's bring that back for Forza Horizon 2. Yeah. So that's exactly what we've done. It's one of the benefits that we, we share an engine with the Forza Motorsport guys. We're always adding to it, which means we benefit from the features that, that they have. So we brought uh, tuning back into Horizon 2, or into Horizon 2 for the very yeah. first time. You can do everything to your car that you can in Forza Motorsport, you can change your gear ratios, you can change your ride height, you can change other things about which I really have very little understanding. Um, but it's incredibly it's incredibly sophisticated, you can do all the things you can do in Motorsport in Horizon 2. Great. Um, I was going to ask something, but I've forgotten it. So we'll go back to the community question. This is why it's great having community yeah. questions to do this for us. Um, right. Uh, is the damage visual or mechanical? Oh, and that's from... Feedmeister or T-Headmeister. So the damage is vis visual by default, visual only. But again, this is new for Horizon 2, and again, it's because fans asked for it. Um, we have included mechanical damage this time. It's not on by default because if you drive anything like I do, your car will not be serviceable after a couple right. of minutes. But if you are um, of that inclination, you can turn on mechanical damage, and your 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 car will suffer damage both in terms of performance, in terms of handling based on the kind of damage you inflict upon it. Um, we'll repair it for you, I think we we'll repair it for you before races just so that you're not crippled in a, in a race, but otherwise yeah, if that's your, if that's your thing, you can do it in Horizon 2. Magic. I remembered my question, you'll be relieved to know. It was about the Forza community actually. You know, how, how did the Forza community react to Horizon? You know, obviously it's a, a, an established, just about dropped the surface there, that would be fun. An established, long-standing community with a really strong tie to the guys at Turn 10, you know, and, and you know, you guys came along with a different spin on things. Did they, did they uh, welcome you to the family quickly, or? I think, I think they did, actually, to be honest. Um, I was actually speaking to some guys about this, this today, you know, just thinking back to maybe this time two years ago, maybe a little bit earlier in the year when we were first starting to talk about Horizon. Um, and I think everybody, I think fans, journalists, um, people within, you know, Turn 10 even, were thinking, what, what is this thing? What is, how does it relate to Forza Motorsport and what we know? But you know what, I think the fans, as soon as we, we did a good job explaining what it was, and honestly that took a little bit of time, but as soon as we, we explained exactly what Horizon was, I think they're incredibly open-minded. They, they are into Forza because they love the things that we do. They love great experiences in cars, and they could see that Horizon was going to offer them a different one, certainly, but still one that they could they could get on board with. And since since then, I've always been blown away by the feedback we get on the on the motorsport forums, um, the suggestions we get, uh, the the praise, the criticism as well is always well taken back at, at, at playground. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, I think they are. They've been incredibly accepting of what is this expansion of, of what they understand for us to be. Great. Good stuff. Uh, Swamp Thing 1 uh, is asking about how many cars are in the game, and he is a particular fan of the Aerial Atom and the McLaren P1. Are they included? Uh, so, we are in the middle of uh, announcing all of our cars. I think we're about 150 cars in. 150 cars in with the car announcements. 
about that. About 150 cars in. Okay, we're can you list them all for us here now? Uh, you want me to do it alphabetically? Uh, yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah. Reverse alphabetically. <laughs> Actually, you can do it while you're racing. Am I going to race now? Yeah. Well, well, should we? <laughs> yeah, I'm oh, just look at that! Yeah, look. <laughs> Hand it over. yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. But that, uh, the, so, this yeah, is so your challenge. Sorry, the answer to that question was: we are in the middle of announcing them all. There are more than 200 available on day one at launch for everybody. Mm. Um, I think the car announcements are running up till launch. Yes, they are. And in answer to specific questions, I'm sure we've announced the McLaren P1. It's been in all our, it's been in all, all our promotion, right? I don't know if we've announced the Aerial Atom. But I just did. So there we go. Well, there you go. That's why we do this. How is your um, overcharged Delirium it's, XT, it's by delicious. the way? It's delicious. Yeah, okay, it's, it? it's all right. Are yeah. you feeling a bit mutant yet? Or are you uh, it's getting that way. I feel yeah. feeling like that well, all day, to be honest. That's what for you, isn't it? Uh, right. Um, so I'm going to keep chucking questions at you while you race. Sure thing. Um, I don't know what. So what we're going to do um, is Ralph is going to run. Uh, and we'll see what position he comes in. Yeah, this yeah. should be interesting. Actually. Shall we? I mean, have you played um, this before? Do you? A couple of times. A couple <laughs> of times. Uh, would you, will we do use the, use the same car? We probably should use just the same for fairness. Car. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm gonna have a shot and see if I can beat Ralph's position because I do fancy myself as a bit of a bit of a Horizon expert actually. Is so that a fact? I think I can take you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think I've got this. Um, and I'm going to keep swat, uh, chucking questions at you while you do it to try and distract you. <laughs> okay. uh, right, um, Raw Nuts, nice one mate. Raw Nuts asks, are drivetrain swaps in? So going back to are tuning. Are drivetrain swaps in? Yes, drivetrain swaps are in. So we go the Lambo? Very good. We'll take the Lambo? Yeah, let's do the Lambo, why not? Right. And uh, Blue Venom 07 is asking about manual shifting. You got manual shifting in? Of course. Of, of course. course. Andy has shifting. been using manual, sh manual shifting uh, all week in his BCDs. In fact, that, that live stream uh, last night, um, all the driving Andy did uh, was manual shifting, traction control off. He is hardcore. Are you, you're not using manual shifting, are you? Actually, I'm not. That's good. That's I lack good. the ability. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, let's see. I think we've... I think we've covered all these questions. That's awesome. So are you, you're uh, in car view? I love it. Yeah, I love it. I actually use um, bonnet for racing and in car for cruising. Let's see. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> hey! This is not going well. Like that? Just a little joke for you there. Uh, right. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. So when I was playing this at E3, my tactic here was then to switch out to the the elevated cam. Yes, so it's not ideal for... Uh, like they obviously wheels. didn't take smashing through vineyards into account when designing the Huracan. Oh, this is not going well. So tell me more about the, you know, the, the diversity of the of the map and the world you've got here. So we're seeing, you know, going through vineyards, things like that. What, what else is unique to this part of the world? Um, well, so we're about to hit the coast and this is one of the things that I was most attracted to this area for because we obviously we didn't have a coast, we didn't have the sea in the original horizon. Um, Keep talking Ralph. I'm trying to, I cannot <laughs> do both at once. Um, so yeah, so we've got a, a beautiful coastline and what a coastline it is, what amazing uh, driving roads uh, there are here and then obviously we go right al along, we go into France and along to Nice. Um, so yeah, city is another, we've mentioned that already. It's a, um, it's really cool that we've got a city and a beautiful one and a big one as well, you know. So, I mean, even the um, the brief glimpse we gave you of it last night in the Twitch uh, stream uh, is not even half of the city uh, as it exists in the game. It's and then, yeah, I mean, so France, I feel wow. like we're not allowing rewind, I take it. That no, would be, no, uh, no rewind, so. That would be cheating. Um, yeah, France is beautiful. I had never heard of the town of Sisteron before uh, in Provence, but uh, it is very lovely. It has some amazing uh, roads in it as well, some great racing to be had in Sisteron. And of course, the legendary lavender fields, uh, of which I am a big fan. Nice one. Have you tweaked the, the MPC AI? Drivers to reflect the driving styles of northern France, uh, or sorry, southern France and northern Italy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it 
in what way? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> now are you going to use the... Was Andy using the shortcut? Do you use the shortcut here, Andy? No? Is it a shortcut? It is a slight shortcut, but it is really treacherous. Uh, and I'm making such a peg zero of this that... Where are you? Fifth. Fair. Oh, I ran this just uh, just about an hour ago and came fifth. Right. So I think I can go better. Oh, oh. it is. Well so do I get now. to ask you questions while you're going? Yeah, you can ask me anything you want. Maybe the um, the viewers on Twitch can ask me some questions. Questions for AC Bongos, yes. Well, let's not do that. Ian, you're moderating heavily, aren't you? <laughs> Just, um, you know, we were talking about the world earlier, like, it's a very simplistic question, I'm almost sorry to ask it, but how much bigger is it than, than Horizon 1? So it is, um, it's three times bigger in terms of the area that you have to drive in, the area you have to explore. So okay. um, a lot of that comes from the fact that it's just so open, you know, you didn't have the fields, you didn't have the forest, the hills, uh, in the original Horizon, and uh, yes, it's, it's, it's much, much bigger. Okay, good. I'm just, a, a couple of extra questions have just come through here. I think Rockane is asking a really good one. Uh, so Rockane's asking, is the weather scripted? So we haven't really talked about the weather, but we haven't you, know, talked you, about you the do weather. see an amazing example of it in that, in that demo. Is the weather scripted in specific places in the map, or is it completely random and dynamic? Excellent question. So there are a couple of instances close to the start of the game where we actually script it. Just part of the, the gameplay flow involves seeing rain for the first time. Yeah, so, so we do have the ability to say, Make it rain, obviously, yeah. as, as we do in the the the, the Gamescom make demo as well. Make it rain. Um, but beyond that, we just leave it up to. We have the system called the, called a weather manager. Okay. Um, so we fed climatic data into it. We actually have there are different climatic zones around the world, which determine the the um, the way clouds can form, the way weather can transition, and, and such yeah. like. And yeah, we absolutely leave it up to the weather manager and the time of day because. What we've found is, that rather than sort of trying to be prescriptive about it and saying, okay, now it should rain at this point, just yeah. letting it run, letting it do its thing, means it creates much more diversity than, than, than we would otherwise. Right. And what, uh, what kind of extremes of weather do you have? So, it just occurred to me there, I mean, lightning. Have you got lightning? We've got rainbows. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> lightning would be awesome, Ralph. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the ra you were telling me yesterday about the, the light physics on the rainbow. I, yes! What, what kind of work have you done on that? It just, like we talked about it the other day, that as you add these things, it must have such a knock-on effect to every other part of the, of the game, right? Yes, you yeah, weather, yeah, absolutely. It affects oh, the absolutely. gameplay, it affects the visuals, it affects you know, the physics. Absolutely, You add yeah. rainbows, even that in itself mucks it around with other things, doesn't it? It's... sure. <laughs> Sure. I'm if you just like. trying to delay getting it. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, so rainbows is a funny one um, because I mean, I, as I said to you the other day, they are <laughs> as absurd as it sounds. They are mathematically correct rainbows. Yeah. You know. So it's uh, and this took me a little while to grasp myself um, that we don't just say, okay, put rainbow here yeah. and rainbow appears. They appear because the sun is at the right angle and sun, sunlight is coming through the atmosphere at the right angle and there is the correct amount of moisture in the atmosphere and so they occur exactly as they do in, in real life, that's how a rainbow appears in real life. Um, well it's also magic. Yes, yes it's also, it's also magic. Yes. Mostly magic but there's also a lot of stuff goes on as well. Um, it's going to be incredible for, yeah. I know there's more more community questions on, you want me on the to, laptop. I can just go through yeah, them. You go you're for you're, it, you're yeah. clearly very busy. You go for it, yeah. um, okay, so Simi Simi is asking question. Online free roam traffic confirmed to me. Confirmed. There is traffic in online free roam and indeed in online road trip, which is our, our other main way of uh, of playing the game. Um, and Martin Higgins 091271. Obviously, a lot of Martin Higgins before him. Uh, will there be clubs? Yes, there will be clubs. Um, in fact, yes, it's a big, big feature, part of the social uh, aspects of the game that we're talking a lot about this week at Gamescom. Clubs um, are there for you to really to do with as you please. We see them just as a way for you to, um, to play with other people, to find people who like the things that you like to do. 
and you can create a club or you can join an existing club. You can search all the clubs in the game to find one that's right for you. And clubs can actually have up to 1,000 members, which is a massive number of people to have in a club. We really like the idea that you could create your own community uh, within Horizon 2. You know, so that, that club could be massive, have up to a thousand people, you could dominate the global leaderboards. Maybe if you're already part of an existing, I don't know, a forum or a social network, you could bring those people into Horizon 2 with you. You can all still socialize within the game in exactly the same way. So it's really flexible. We're not really saying this is what clubs are for. You have to do this or you have to do that. Really, we're basically just setting up a system which allows you to do with the club as you please. Set it up for whatever you want, use it as you want. You have a club notice board which allows you to post messages uh, to your club members. Uh, you have an internal club ranking system. You have obviously the, the club's ranking system in, the, in a global leaderboard. Um, and they're just an awesome way that you can, uh, you can expand your um, your contact base, I guess, within the game. So if you don't have friends who are playing the game, and if not, why not? Um, you have your club. So you have up to a thousand people that you can be compared to on speed traps, uh, that you can be um, playing with in online. Keep talking, Ralph, keep talking. I don't think I've ever been as excited in my life. Four. It's still quite a long way to go there, Graham. No, no, no. Not far. Ah, Seven Kayan. Oh, hello. Um, says, uh, story cutscenes like last time wristbands. Uh, so yes, the answer is, yeah, I guess there are story cutscenes. There are certainly cutscenes, there are characters within the game. So different characters from last time, um, but you will meet uh, Ben, who is the, uh, the organizer of the, the Horizon Festival in Europe, and who is um, organizing the road trip as well, which you go out on, which is the main sort of um, career mode in solo play. And wristbands are still, yeah, I can't believe it! I feel so alive! Fourth! Oh, that's excellent, but it's very, very oh. well done. Fantastic. Oh, that's alright, it's just a bit of surface damage, it's, it's a flesh wound. I bet your Major Nelson can do that either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, what do I win? Um. <laughs> <laughs> My enduring pride? <laughs> Oh, fantastic. I genuinely am not sure I've ever been as nervous about anything in my life. That was good. Sorry, I interrupted your That's question. That's alright. You know, I was just answering the second half of this, which is, um, are there wristbands? Yes, there are wristbands. Um, they are still the kind of progression currency of the, of the game, if you like. Um, they are... Um, they're actually quite cool this time. They're basically, they describe your, your level throughout the game. So we have a leveling system that sits across the entire game. So everything you do in solo play, everything you do online contributes to this level, which in turn contributes to your wristband color. And whenever your gamer tag is displayed within the game on your drive guitar and online um, leaderboards, what have you, uh, your wristband color and your level will always be displayed along with it. So it's a point of pride. It's going to call you out for how uh, how well progressed, how sophisticated you are in the game. Excellent. Shall we talk about music a little bit? Let's talk about music. What time is it now? Oh God, I'm enjoying this. It's like it's almost 45 we minutes we've gone for, isn't it? Really? But I hope I hope people are watching. Um, is anyone watching? Wow, yeah. ah, great. Uh, yeah, so music, like, uh, we were talking the other day, weren't we? I actually think, like, music in driving games is massively, massively important. Mm. Right? I maybe shouldn't talk about a, spe a particular driving game, but there, is a, there was a game a good few years ago that used a, a very popular feeder song called Buck Rogers, and that, that is seared in my head, that song, with a particular type of driving experience. And in Forza Horizon, I had the same thing with Porter Robinson. That song's language, isn't it? That's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. That Porter Robinson song, whenever I hear it, it's just like, it takes me right back into Forza, and, you know, I can almost feel it. Like, yeah. is that... I, I have, think about I that? Have, is that something you were you inspired by that to bring music into Forza? I have exactly the same response to Porter Robinson. It has that absolute sort of reaction in me as well. Um, and yeah, I think at, at its root, that's exactly why we think music is so important. It's, it's like totally linked with driving, right? I drive, well, I listen drive to music. Car, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I turn it up loud and maybe I drive faster than I should as a result. Yeah, um, yeah I, th I think that absolutely applies in video games as well. Even without the Horizon Festival sort of backdrop, you know, if we, even if we didn't have that, I'm sure we would still have, have music because they go together so well. Yeah. Um, I mean, with the Porter Robinson track, honestly, I don't think we ever expected that 
that that one would be. I mean, we put it on the press start screen, so it was very prominent in the game. Yeah. Um, but that was that's kind of a last minute decision. And and when we were developing Horizon, you know, we had the press start screen. We tried a couple of tracks from the soundtrack. That one just really seemed to fit. Yeah. Um, and as you say, now it's kind of synonymous. I'm sure there are tracks in the. Uh, the Horizon 2 soundtrack, which will become as synonymous with yeah. the Horizon 2 as that one is to the original. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm pleased with the, with the reception to the soundtrack in the in Horizon. Oh, amazed! Absolutely blown away because music is very subjective, right? I mean, you cannot please everybody. Yeah. Um, but it seems like we we please quite a lot of people, which is uh, with music is sometimes all, all you can do. Yeah. Obviously, that's all all credit to Rob the Bank yeah. <laughs> rather than uh, rather than anyone else. He does such a great job of that. It's his his, his business to to curate music to you know to, to be a music supervisor. What does he? How does I mean? Does he come into the studio and talk to you about the game? Does he? Yeah, he does. He does. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. So he'll, he'll come in and we'll basically spend a day every couple of months just talking about where the game is. So obviously we, we show him the game. On the first game that was massively important because we were building the Horizon Festival for the first time and obviously as well as being a music supervisor he organises festival and camp festival in the UK. Um, so it was kind of cool to get his thoughts on festival design as well. You know, he sent us lots of reference for festival tents and stages and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, he'll come in and talk about music, he'll play his stuff that he's hearing and he hears things months and months in advance, yeah. which is why. So this song is playing at the moment, um, it's called Pushing On. I think it's just actually been, it's come out this week or it's coming out next week. Um, but obviously this has been in the game for, for months and months and months because right. he hears them all in advance, uh, you know, in, in advance because of his position. Fantastic. So actually Matt6661 asked a, sp a specific uh, question about music, which is what got me onto it. So Matt asks, what styles of music genre do you have in the game? So tell us about that and then the number of, um, you've upped the number of uh, radio stations in the game now as well, yeah? We have, we have. We now have... Um, Seven radio stations, three in the original game, seven radio stations now, more than double the amount of music, which is awesome. Because it means obviously there's more to listen to, that means there's more variety. It also means you know you, you can spend longer listening to the, the game before it starts to get repetitive. Like that was really important that we wanted to achieve this time. So two of the radio stations from last time are making a, a reappearance. So Horizon Pulse is back and Horizon Base Arena, which we're uh, we're listening to here. Yep. Um, so Horizon Pulse is summery disco pop is probably how I would describe it. It doesn't actually sound very good when I say that, but it's a cool station. I love it. Um, a Base Arena is your, your dance and electronic um, music. So last time was a little bit dubstepy just because because 2012. Um, but now it's interesting, it's probably of all the stations, it's the one that's moved on the most. Um, just that, that, that style of music, electronic music, moves so fast yeah. that now the landscape is totally different. It's you know much more sort of deep house, smooth house, disclosure. We've got disclosure remix in there. Um, no dubstep, no, no dubstep, no square legs no this dubstep. time. Is that a policy? Uh, it's not a policy, it's just how it's happened. <laughs> Yeah, it's happening. If a great dubstep, dubstep, dubstep track had come along, then I'm, I'm sure we'd have put it in. But, right, cool. uh, how, how do you, when I was racing, I was concentrating so much I wasn't listening properly, but had you answered West underscore 408's question? No, I didn't, actually. I didn't. Festival events with enclosed circuits, races without the off-roading. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll take the second question first, actually, because this is, this is interesting. I hear this a lot. I think by virtue of the way w that we showed the game at E3, obviously, and the, the demo we have here, um, as you've been seeing, we're taking a Lamborghini across a field. <laughs> and, and there are some people who, who are saying you should not take a Lamborghini across a field, and who knows, they may be right. Um, but obviously this is a demo very specifically set up for a show like this. Mm. I guess the thing I'd say is we never force you to take a supercar and drive it through a field. Yeah. You know? So when you choose a car uh, and enter a championship with it, you end up, uh, the, the game gives you appropriate events, appropriate races for that car. You know, so there are lots of events that will take you across country, um, take you off-road, but you will enter them by virtue of having selected uh, an extreme off-road truck or a classic rally car or something like that. Um, a Lamborghini, if you select the Lamborghini or a Ferrari or, or whatever, you're much more likely to get on-road, on-track circuits, point-to-point -point street races, things like that. Cool. And, and yeah, the festival events are much less enclosed uh, than last time. 
um, because our world is so much less enclosed yeah. as well. You know, so now we use a checkpoint system. You can see it in the in the demo that we're showing. So you're racing through checkpoints, um, which means that you can you can cut a bit of corners. That's that's fine. Um, you can adapt your racing line. That's that's fine as well. Um, but you certainly won't be bouncing off the barriers because you can use the whole of the track. You can use the off-field as well. Right, magic. Well, Ralph, I could honestly talk all night about this. Um, but you know what, we're doing a community party on the booth here in about 10 minutes. And I should probably go and make sure that everything's fine for that. Um, so, uh, you know what, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you've enjoyed it.